So recently, we saw the release of the latest trailer for the upcoming Disney Plus original series, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, drop on YouTube, complete with a release date for the 20th of December, 2023, which, well, you know, that's a lot sooner than I was expecting, but we'll talk about that later. And so yeah, for those not in the know, Percy Jackson and the Olympians is the second attempt at a Hollywood adaptation of the best-selling series, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, which chronicles the story of, you guessed it, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. <laughs> a demigod son of Poseidon who finds himself embroiled in a world of magic and mystery and gods. Accused of stealing Zeus's lightning bolt, Percy goes on a quest to clear his name and save his mum, with the story eventually snowballing into this kid's epic struggle against the injustice of the gods and the way they treat their demigod children, and also against the potential return of Kronos and the Titans to power. It was a massively popular book series when it released, and has spawned spin-offs and sequels galore, and also an ill-fated attempt at a cinematic adaptation, but we do not talk about that here. Yeah, I'm getting flashbacks as we speak. And then we got that spark of hope. The announcement that Disney, Disney, had the film rights for the series. And that instead of trying to do a film adaptation, which had previously failed, they were going to try to make this a long-form series on Disney+. Plus, One season per book. Hell yeah. After all, we're in the golden age of TV, where shows like Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, The Mandalorian, etc. were making an impact and lifting the prestige of the medium. So everything was looking swell. There are a few controversies here and there, mostly to do with the casting, but once again, no real need to delve into that minefield again, is there? But that didn't matter. The hype was all there. And then we got that first teaser, and the hype exploded. Finally, we had to see something. Finally, it's on the way, and it actually looked good. Trailer got millions of views, and it seemed set. And then we came to this latest trailer, which honestly has a lot fewer views than I was expecting. I mean, not even a million views as of writing this. Hell, from what I've seen, it's only just touched over 500,000 views, which, it's not great, but I don't think that has anything to do with the popularity of the show. I'd argue it's because the title was very, very, very badly optimised. It doesn't even mention that it's a teaser trailer for the show at all. And so, yeah, not really sure what Brainiac was behind this, but good job. And so, yeah, that complaint aside, not much else to do but jump into the trailer and see what they've decided to share today. Okay, so first up, we'll touch on the visuals, yeah? So... I'm a bit mixed. We have some shots I think look really good. Percy in the cabin, the half-bloods running across the bridge, them walking past Talia's tree, all good stuff. I feel like no matter what, those sort of nature shots, they always look good. The practical stuff, the environments, that's always great. But then there's some shots that are not so good if you ask me. The one of Ares walking towards the camera and the three kids on the beach. I don't know, it feels like a case of undercooked CGI, maybe? Is it just me, or do these shots look like the kids and Ares have been very obviously green-screened over the top? It just looks cheap. And it's a problem I've seen in so many different Disney Plus shows. So, it's not like I think they're just specifically screwing Percy Jackson up, but like, come on, Disney. You gotta pay the artists more. This is a franchise that is going to depend on effects going forward. Monsters, god forms, magic, all that sort of stuff. It's necessary, and based on some of these images, it does not look that promising. Like, I could get past it being bad, but it'll be really disappointing if the effects don't look good. And also, just a side note based on what we've seen so far from the pictures, I don't know when the chronology of the show is going to be set, but I'll put this out there, nostalgia sells, and the 2000s nostalgia is in. Massive missed opportunity for some fun if they make this thing a fully modern adaptation. Okay, yeah, but the scenes. Okay, so we start off with a look at Percy, and more than any other character, I don't know, this kid's the furthest thing from what I was expecting. Like, I'm very willing for him to pull off a great performance, but as a start, just looking at him, I'm not so sure. He just isn't what comes to mind when I think Percy Jackson. You know, I'm not talking about the looks maybe, but just the general vibe of him, the way he holds himself. You get me? We then get a glimpse at Ares, who's looking pretty generic, if I'm being honest. Your stock standard abusive dad from any sort of film ever. Just so generic. And maybe that's how Ares is supposed to be, but I don't know. I think he's meant to be more of a badass biker type of dude. He just isn't serving that vibe to me right now. I guess we'll have to wait and see though. Also, the sword looks very lame. Really lame. I get what they're going for, fantasy, demonic sort of thing, but currently, yeah, he's completely fallen flat. We then get a shot of Percy walking into a dark building, which I assume is his cabin at Camp Half-Blood. Got some sea creature bones, a pool it looks like. Honestly, this looks like a pretty cool set. And further proof to me that in terms of the practical stuff, the sets, the costumes and whatnot, you can expect the show to look really good. A contrast with the CGI quality, perhaps. 
We'll see. We then have an aerial shot of a bunch of campers running across a bridge at Camp Half-Blood, and yep, looking adequately epic if you ask me. I'll say it again, Disney never fails to deliver on those sort of sweeping environmental landscape shots. Hell yeah. Next up, I think that would be Medusa, right? Hair kind of looks like snakes if you ask me from this angle, and her eyes are looking pretty ominous. Honestly, the whole Medusa storyline in the books, it's probably one of the most hyped, tone-setting moments in the early days of the franchise. It's so creepy and unsettling. A great introduction to the dangers that our heroes are going to face. So, I think more than anything, pulling this off, it's a necessity to the rest of the show. It's probably the show's first real big test, and in my eyes is the first point where fans might quit the show if it sucks. Yes, there's Cam Half-Blood and all of that, but here's where in my eyes the story kicks into another gear, and that sense of peril starts to make its way into the story well and truly. You can't afford to cock it up. We then get a look at Grover's legs, which... You know what, kind of expected them to look like absolute trash, but here they actually don't look too bad. Which is good, because he's a pretty important character of the series. At minimum, I feel like those legs do have to look as good as Mr. Tumnus from the Narnia movies, which considering they came out coming up to 20 years ago, that hopefully shouldn't be a challenge. But you never know these days. I swear this era of film, either your CGI is groundbreaking like Avatar, or it looks like us. There's very rarely any in-between. We then see our youngsters walking past Talia's tree, setting things up nicely. And I like that you can actually see her sort of in the tree itself. It's kind of shaped like a real person if you look at it closely, or at least I assume that's the tree we're looking at. I guess there could be more than one person tree, but I don't really remember anything like that. We then get another closer look at Grover. He seems fine. Nothing much to say, really. Annabeth fighting a monster. And yeah, I know her casting was controversial, to say the least, but I think this kid is going to be good. I don't know why, I've never seen her in literally anything else, but it's just a feeling. We then have a car crash where Percy and Grover and his mum get attacked by Hades' monster, and then the three youngsters are on a beach, looks like the same beach that Ares is on, so likely the prelude to their battle, whilst we also get a voiceover from Zeus. Damn, that voice sounds ominous and cool and epic and commanding, and I'm so, so sad that we're only going to get one season with this actor. Rest in peace. And then we get a release date of December 20th, which is well ahead of schedule. Way sooner than I was expecting. I was expecting 2024 or something like that. Hopefully it doesn't feel rushed. Hopefully the CGI looks good and everything looks finished, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. And so yeah, that's the end of the trailer. It wasn't very long. Not much to say, really. And so with all that being said, I would just like to remind you that these have been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the trailer, if you've seen it? Did you like it? Hate it? Are you hyped for the show? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.